Okay, so we just saw the Jacquard index of an edge, uh, which is a measure uh, on the edge of the network. And now we will talk about the strength of an edge. In fact, strength is just an extension of the Jacquard index. So it's still a measure to quantify how much an edge is likely to separate a graph into two highly connected subgraphs. It still represents the contribution of the edge to the cohesion of the network. And we still use the same adjective to qualify the edges. So weak edges will separate clusters, whereas strong edges will bind the nodes of a cluster together. So um, strength is an extension of Jacquard index because Jacquard index um, was about uh, counting triangles. Uh, there, in strength, we will count the, the ratio of four cycles uh, in which an edge is present. The strength uh, allows us to define a particular kind of edges, uh, which are called isthmus bridges or cut edges. These particular edges are particular because if you remove them, you will divide the network into two separate connected components. So in this particular example, uh, the edge uh, GN is a bridge, the edge AB is also a bridge, DE, HI, RT, and PQ. And the strength is defined so as to be zero for um, bridges. So the intuition between, uh, behind strength is that strength is a combination of Jacquard index and four cycles density. In fact, Jacquard index is about triangles density, and triangles are three cycles, cycles of length three. So strength is just counting the ratio of three cycles and four cycles. You may wonder why we do not count the ratio of five cycles, six cycles, and so on. It's just because it doesn't add so much to the definition of uh, the strength. In fact, uh, the strength of an edge is already well delimited with uh, three cycles and four cycles. There is no need to add the ratio of five cycles and six cycles, and so on. So to see how we can calculate uh, the strength of an edge, we need to introduce a couple of notation. So you already know about the edge E between the node U and V of your network. And U and NV are the neighborhood of the nodes U and V. We defined the set MU to be the set of nodes of the neighborhood of U without the nodes of the neighborhood of V. And conversely, MV is defined to be the set of nodes of the neighborhood of V without the nodes of the neighborhood of U. We call the intersection between the neighborhood of U and the neighborhood of V WUV. You already know the notation, x between bars, to be the side of the set x. The number of elements of this set also called the cardinality of the set. Finally, n and k between parentheses stand for the binomial coefficient between n and k, also, also called n choose k. It just counts the number of ways you can choose k elements among n elements. So, strength is about a density ratio of particular patterns in the network. So, first we need to define what is an edge density ratio. Let's say we have two sets of nodes, U and V. The number of edges between the nodes of U and V is noted E of U and V. The ratio of actual edges between vertices of U and V and the maximum number of possible edges, so the number of dyads, between nodes of U and V is computed by this formula. The ratio between the set U and V is the number of edges between the set U and V divided by the, the sizes of U and V. So uh, the edge density ratio is just the number of edges divided by the size of U times the size of V. If you need to compute the edge density ratio of a single set, you just have to count the number of edges between the nodes of this set and divide it by the binomial coefficient between 2 and the size of the set. We also use a partition of the neighborhood of U and V to count uh, the three cycles. So let's say that we have a graph uh, with the edge E between the node U and V. We use this set, MU and MV and WUV, to be a partition of the neighborhood of U and V. This is a partition because uh, when you take the union of the three sets, you have every 
neighbors of node u and node v and also there is no intersection between mu or mv, mv or wuv and wuv or mu and we will use this partition to count the number of cycles in which the edge between u and v is so start, first we start with the density of three cycles so the density of three cycles is just the number of triangles that contains the edge E divided by the numbers of triad that contains the nodes of E. So uh, we can remark that every triangle contain, that contains the edge E between U and V have to be formed with a third uh, node that is both a neighborhood of a neighbor of U and a, and a neighbor of V. So, the set in which you can find the neighbor of u and v is, by definition, w, u, v. This means that to count every triangle, you just have to count the number of nodes that is in w, u, v. So, the number of triangles with the edge e is just the size of the set w, u, v. Now, let's look at the number of triads. Triads is just a list of three nodes. We already know two nodes of the triad we are interested in that are u and v. So the third node could be either in mu or in mv or in w, u, v. So to count the number of possible triads with node u and v, we just have to, to measure the size of the set mu union mv union w, u, v. So when you have to compute the size of this set, this is just mu the size of mu plus the size of w, u, v plus the size of mv. So the ratio between the number of triangles and number of triads is just the ratio between the size of w, u, v and the sum of these three sizes. This is in fact the Jacquard index of the edge. And you can verify uh, this assumption by taking this notation and it's pretty straightforward starting from this. Okay, so we just saw that the density of three cycles that contain an HE is defined by the Jacquard index of the edge E. Now we have to, to explain the density of four cycles, of cycles of length four. This is a little bit more complicated than for three cycles, but still the partition of the neighborhood of U and V will help us to count the number of possible four cycles uh, that contain the edge E. So, we are interested in four cycles. Uh, four cycles has four nodes, because the length is four. And we already know the two, two of these four nodes, U and V. So, according to the position of the two extra nodes, let's call them X and Y, we will, we will see that there is only four possibilities for X and Y to be positioned in the neighborhood of U and V. So, there is only four possibilities. Let's take the first one. The first one is, is when X is in MV, this node, Y is in WV, this node, and the four cycle is formed in, uh, in, in four cycle form. Uh, and you can remark that this kind of four cycle implies that there is an edge between W, UV, and MV. The second possibility of a four cycle containing U and V is when X is in MU, this node for example, and Y is in WV, let's say this node for example. This forms the green four cycles and you can uh, remark that uh, this four cycle implies that there is an edge between the set MU and WUV. The third possibility for a four cycle to contain E is when X is in MU, this one, and Y is in MV this one. This is forming the blue four cycle and you can remark that again a four cycle containing HV in this configuration implies that there is an edge between the set MU and the set MV. And finally the last possibility to have a four cycle containing U and V is for X and Y to be both in WUV. So this is forming the pink four cycle and you can remark that in this case there is an edge between inside the set uh, WUV. And so there is no other possibility for a four cycle to contain uh, to contain E than these four possibilities. And in fact, this is very convenient because we have seen that for each kind of four cycle to exist 
containing E, this implies having an, having an edge between a uh, combination between these three sets. An edge between these two, these two, these two, and finally the special case, the pink case, inside WUV. And with the edge density ratio that we have introduced uh, previously, we know how to compute the edge density ratio between two sets. This is given by the formula S of the two sets. So, since there is only four possibilities for four cycles that contain E, we can just add the edge density ratio between the two sets of the four possibilities. So, the edge density ratio between these two sets, this is the green term, the edge density between these two sets, the orange term, between these two sets, the blue term, and inside WUV, this special term. Let's recall that, for example, the edge density between NMU and MV is given by the number of edges between NMU and WUV divided by the size of MU times the size of WUV. So that's it. We have a convenient way to count the density of four cycles that contains E. So to summarize, the strength of an edge is a combination of the edge density of three cycles, gamma 3 of E, this is the Jacquard index, and we already saw that this is given by this formula. And it is combined with the density of four cycles, gamma 4 of E, the number of four cycles divided by the number of tetrads, and the previous demonstration shows that this is given by this term. So the strength of an edge is just the sum between these two terms, gamma 3 of E and gamma 4 of E. And that's it. So in this course, we have seen uh, a couple of edge measures. First, the Jacquard index. So we introduced it with a global measure of similarity between two sets, but we also saw how it can be used to be to be transformed in a, in a measure of an edge of a network, the Jacquard index of an edge. This is strictly equivalent to the density of three cycles and contains the edge. We have saw how to compute the density of four cycles containing the edge, and we have shown that it is combined into the strength of an edge. The strength of an edge is a, co is a very convenient measure, and it is, for example, using the strength clustering algorithm that will be developed in, a, in, a, in another course. You may want to check these two references that uh, explain the computation and the algorithm used between, uh, behind the um, clustering algorithm that is called the strength clustering algorithm. And to apply it on your own network, you can refer to the tutorial 4.1. That's it for this course. Thank you.